evening, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of our podcast, Beneath Your Skin. What can I say? Still going crazy. This is Gaia, working on being a good hellhound, feeding on bad people and all that jets. How are you doing, my dear? Doing okay. The weather has changed, and finally that great British grey is everywhere. And I'm like, oh. I can't even go for my hours, like, permitted walk now because it's been pouring with rain. Things are getting better and better. <laughs> so joyous. Yeah, weather changed the year too. All grey and cloudy and rainy. One more reason to stay inside yes. and recording the podcast. Today, we are going to talk about the movie Annabelle Creation and people. Let me tell you, if this was supposed to be the best movie in the whole saga, oh, you will be disappointed. It's boring. It's filled with so many nonsenses and with so many cliches. Uh, the scary parts aren't scary at all. Once again, we see uh, glowing eyes in pictures. And uh, I want to open this episode with one question that mm, or over a scene that happens uh, more or less during the middle of the movie when we realize uh, that uh, Hannibal, the dog, was uh, once uh, exorcised and uh, put into the closet with the crosses and the glued pages of the Bible by two priests that are built like two wrestlers. <laughs> so we can understand the doll is dangerous. So my question is, why the hell are you putting that doll into a closet in a private house with two people who barely survived whatever happened with the doll instead of that shipping her, I don't know, to the Vatican? where uh, she could be locked in the archives, or even better, why don't you ship her to Mars and let her, or even the sun, and let her burn? Why? Uh, just why? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, you needed a reason for the doll to be still inside the house. Yes, I understand that. But you couldn't find any other reason? That's simply stupid. That scene is, and oh yeah, 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 I am. I have the, the woman with the questions. Why is the demon supposed to look like Nightcrawl of the X-Men? <laughs> so the moment we see, as I always say, the moment we see the creature is the moment the tension is broken and the movie goes to shit. But why the hell should he look like an X-Men? So I'm mean, sorry, what do you think? I don't know why they needed to have another origin story for Annabelle. It was like, it's the origin of the origin of the origin. It's like three origin stories. Because it was the origin of the original demon that became Annabelle. Then it was the origin story of Annabelle when she became the girl. And it was the origin story of how that girl ended up growing up to be the killer in like the other Annabelle movie. I'm like, we don't need all these origin stories. Also, it's like 40 minutes before anything happens. There's not even like... Most of these horror movies starts off with like a scary scene, then some build-up. This one was just like... La 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 We go to church, we're happy, child dies, la 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 la. Some children are coming and I'm like... Where's the horror movie in this? Yes, it's tragic that the daughter died, but that's not a horror movie. That's, you know, it's a drama. That's a tragedy. And I'm like, if you know you have a demonic doll in your house... Why are you inviting a load of kids to stay when you know there's a demon running around because of, like, you summoned a demon to replace your child? You're like, oh, our child died. Let's summon a demon. The demon's apparently gone. Let's summon some more children. Oh, because the demon's not going to prey on that. Now there's a load of vessels and fresh souls to play with. You know, if anything else, the demon on the land is probably going to try and get those children killed. And then they're going to just summon more demons. And But no, it, it didn't, wasn't as interesting as that. It was literally dumb. It was really boring. I didn't like most of the kids. Like, I was just like, I don't understand why they were like why you would turn your house into an orphanage if you have 
a demon vessel in a cupboard. Your wife is hideously like ill and can't move around the place. And they live in the middle of bloody nowhere. And it's like, where are you getting the food? Where are you getting the money? How are these children going to school? Oh, they're being homeschooled by one nun. But they're various different levels. How is anyone going to get there to adopt them? Like, why are all the creepy dolls hanging out in one of the bedroom? Like, just, just loads of like, and I just didn't like anybody. And it was just really long and boring. And it was one of those films that just felt like it was a pointless movie to make. The only bit that I thought was clever and had some nice, like, effects was when they were doing the backstory of um, the Annabelle demon. And she's having a tea party with the doll. And she turns into that really long form. And I was like, that's quite a nice effect. Because it's like, you think it's a little girl and then it turns around and it's just this really long creature. And I'm like, oh, that's that's a nice effect. Apart from that, by the time it started putting the scares in it, I'd got so bored and I didn't like anybody. I didn't care that blankets were moving by themselves or a string was moving by itself or a... It's just like the other... It didn't... It didn't craft a slow burn and then at the end it's just like oh there was a scarecrow that went a bit angry and you fell in a well and I was just like I don't care anymore I don't I don't care I'm not really paying any attention plus nobody died apart from the poor dude and the the, the couple and I'm like oh at least kill one of the kids off you know like one of those annoying bitchy like teenagers that look too old to be there anyway but you know they were, you know, just something that makes it feel a little more tragic. What's with Hollywood and all the like? And everybody survives. Happy endings. I'm like, British and Asian cinema, people die. This is just like, it gets unbelievable when just everyone walks away happily ever after. Every single movie. And, yeah. Oh, it's just, I, was, I don't have much to say to this film because I was just bored and uninterested. And I didn't care that it was there was a, I would have either I would have preferred to have watched the original like make it not an Annabelle movie make it a movie about their daughter dies you know the one that's a basically it's a 10 minute flashback the plot of that was more interesting and how they were just so broken hearted and distraught they prayed to anything that would listen to get their little girl back and obviously something answers and then they realize like They've literally sold their souls for this thing and then it comes... That story was interesting, but we only saw it for 10 minutes. Wouldn't mind watching that movie. But we got that and then we got the story of Annabelle the doll and then we got the story about how Janet... Is it Janet? No, Janet's from Enfield Haunting. Janice. Janice, that's it. That's why I got him confused. And how Janice ends up disappearing, fix her legs are fixed, but she is now... The demon Annabelle? She's possessed by Annabelle? She's just a bit messed up and decides to join the Manson cult when she's older? Like, um, and then she, and then somehow magically she refines the Annabelle doll? So I'm assuming Comes Home must tell the story about how they're reunited. Do you know what I want to see? You know when we watch The Conjuring and at the beginning they're talking about this doll and their nurses and they let it in? How come we haven't seen that movie yet? Like, wouldn't that be the easiest one to do? Just do that rather than two origin stories for Annabelle the doll and an origin story for Annabelle the demon going round in these stupid pointless circles. Yeah, that could have been a good idea, but apparently the producers decided that this was a good idea. And, uh, you know, producers, they have the money. So they have the last word on what they can film or not and that's the point that's the problem uh, above all in hollywood that's almost always the problem the only thing we learn from this movie is that uh, to make doll is an art to make them creepy is the bonus point yeah god why would you design a doll we, that looks that creepy jesus we also realized why everyone is so pleased to find an annabelle doll because only one, 100 of them were done. And in my humble opinion, 100 too many. Yeah, God, yeah. If they exercise the doll, even like in the prequel to this prequel, there's a story about exercising the doll. Did he, because you seem right, the number one. 
So it's like, was there only actually ever one maid? Because I'm sorry, but if the doll had come back and they'd exercised it and put it in the cupboard, they wouldn't have made a hundred of the buggers because they'll be like, no, let's not have this demon doll line out there. But that means there's only one Annabelle doll. So how do they know it's a collector's item if it's lived in the cupboard? And how did it... How did it end up in the shop? Oh, God, that's going to be the next movie, how it got to the shop. Don't. Please don't jinx yourself, Zoe, and don't jinx us. Because uh, I already am fed up with these movies. And uh, honestly, I don't want to know what the hell we are going to watch after. Because uh, this is already enough. Yeah. And as you said, not a single character is uh, enjoyable of lo- or lovable. We can't empathize with any of them. I can somehow understand why Janice uh, is the, the one targeted, because uh, she thinks that her phys- physical problems uh, makes her weak, when uh, that's not the truth. What makes her weak and more susceptible to the demon's influence is that she just wants to be normal. She wants to play like the other girls. She doesn't want to be left behind. And at some point when she's offered the possibility of being a normal girl, she forgets everything else. She opens herself to be a vessel because like that she can be normal. She doesn't give a damn about anything else, not even her other friend the one she wanted to be adopted with. Uh, From the moment she let the demon in, we know she is lost. But she she chooses to be lost. She chooses to to be the vessel because the demon is the only one who offers her normality. And that's the only thing she wanted. So somehow I can understand that storyline. I don't get why one single nun... Uh, is supposed to take care and uh, teach so many uh, girls of different ages. I don't understand why uh, we are supposed to believe that um, a house in the middle of nowhere is a good place to create an orphanage. I don't understand much of the movie at all. Uh, I don't understand how it was uh, created. I don't understand how it was uh, thought, how people thought this was a good idea. Uh, There are no no twists. There are no moments in which you realize something new. It's a very boring movie. It also has an anticlimactic end because... uh, we have this uh, powerful demon, or at least we believe it's powerful because, uh, I mean, uh, with all the, the chaos it creates, we can suppose it's powerful. So we have this powerful demon inside the house. It looks like the house is ready to crumble and to be destroyed. And in the end, the only thing the demon does is to destroy the light bulbs. All the lights goes off and that's it. And you are like, what is the, the powerful demon? What happened to it? It creates a hole in the closet wall so the, the girl can run away and that's it. The light and the hole. Ooh. Ooh, really? And, uh, menacing. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's worth to be a demon. If you can do that, it's really worth it. I mean, even a child could do that without being a demon. But hey, we are not going to talk about this. So, yeah, people, I think this was a useless exercise in shooting a movie. I mean, it could have been a project in a movie school and perhaps it could have had some relevance if it was just that. But this is a mainstream movie. This is something that was filmed with a big budget. And it's not worth it. It is so not worth it. It's just, yeah, I, the whole way through it, I just kept thinking of other movies that were better than it. I kept thinking, how is The Conjuring so like well paced and plotted and that possession seemed so terrifying and so realistic? And this one is just like, I mean, some of the scares were literally like someone, something pulled a string and pulled her toy gun away from her was one of the scares. And I was like, really, really? Oh, no. 
It's decided it didn't like her toy and pulled it away from her. Woo! Scary! I was just like, what? And then I just like, I was thinking about like, that really low budget one that's on Prime called Heidi about the demon doll. I was like, that's more scary. Like, it's just like, it's like, and there's like, just so many other films about like, kids in a house that are more scary. It's more scary. I know it goes a bit stupid by the end of it all, but even like it, at least like, you know, had some more jumps to it. It's just, this is so mainstream and so bland. And I can't imagine who would get scared of this. And it could have cut down with so much. And it was a prequel within a prequel of a prequel. It was just, it was a pointless exercise in a film. And we're fighting demons and no, and there's no exorcisms in it. Apart from one they talk about that happened in the past. And I'm just like, oh God, no, just go and watch anything else. Just, just, yeah. There's so many better haunted house films. And there's so many better doll movies. And about that exorcism happening in the past, we don't even know what the hell happened. We only know that she's paralyzed. Yeah, we, yeah. we are left with more questions than answers. And usually when a movie leaves you with more questions than answers, it means that it missed the point. Totally. Wow. And yeah, and that's what happened. Well, we know now that they're going to make the prequel in which we find out how... You know, the mother got hurt and how they summon the demon and the exorcism. So that'll be there. So there'll be the prequel to the prequel to the prequel will be first. Eventually, we might finally see the actual Annabelle that was the short segment from the beginning of The Conjuring. Not before it has fucking four prequels. And I don't normally swear. So, like, I'm just like, Arr! this needs to go in the garbage can along with films like The Boy. Because that was also oh, yeah. annoyed me. Although the twist, at least, was original. I wasn't expecting that to be the twist. But still, dumb. Just dumb. Mm. Go and watch Heidi, yeah. people. It's low budget and awful, but at least it's like, makes more sense than this franchise is currently. Yep. And uh, next movie we are going to watch is The Nun and you already know what I think about it so, uh, see, see so he's crying right now see what you did producer see you made my Zoe cry she's desperate she's the picture of desperation now and I hate you for that yeah. so remember this yeah after this franchise I'm gonna go and find some wonderful Asian like demonic possession movies and some found footage films and something good. I mean, I've got a list of like God knows how many of them, but I've got some that I've seen that I know are good that I want to rewatch and go, this, this is how you do a good movie. And now at least I'm prepared to sacrifices and uh, to lose characters I like in Asian movies. So <laughs> I, I won't be so heartbroken like I was last time. So yeah, people. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope we can do this without dying before we can watch something good. Because as I said, we have the nun, uh, Annabelle comes home. Yay. And yes, I have, I have this mental picture of this too tall doll walking around like, she, like it's perfectly normal and thinking, okay, I'm going home, I'm going home, I'm going home. And that's all the creepiest I can think about oh. the, the movie. And then we have the Lorona cars. So yay! yay. Uh -huh. Three more movies. <laughs> oh, it never ends. Every time I hear Annabelle comes home, I remember when the, I think it's a football world cup. This is a while ago. I think the nineties came back to the UK and they released that song, it's coming home, it's coming home, football's coming home. So any any Brits listening to this will get the song. So I've just got every time Annabelle comes home, it's coming home, it's coming home, Annabelle's coming home. And it's just like, oh no, it kind of takes away all the scares when the title of the film reminds me of a football chant from the 90s. That's, that's going to be so bad. We know that. So yep. people... If Zoe doesn't have anything else to say, oh, God no. Thank you for listening. And if you want to join us, we have a Facebook page. You just have to look for Beneath Your Skin. And we are on Twitter at Beneath underscore your. We are also on Spotify. And you only have to look for Beneath Your Skin. Thank you for listening and see you next time. Bye bye. 
It's always a pleasure. This at the moment, the pleasure is slightly like killing me because it's because <laughs> this franchise is slightly killing me. But we'll get there soon. But at least I hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>